The coronavirus pandemic is reshaping the biotech industry. Investors are piling into small, often unproven companies in hopes they can produce a vaccine in the coming months. Those companies, in turn, are spending big to expand production for vaccines that aren't yet fully tested nor certified. It's a gamble on both sides for both investor and company, and it reflects the urgency for a vaccine as well as the potential to make money. German pharmaceutical company CureVac, 20 years old, 480 employees, and it dreams of changing the world. It has its sights set on the most sought after of prizes, a coronavirus vaccine, and the newly listed company is making progress. When CureVac went public in New York on Friday, its shares rose 249% during the first day of trading. Those who got in early may have struck it rich. CureVac is just one of many COVID vaccine hopefuls. 170 companies from all over the world, including the US, China, Japan, the UK and India, are also in the race. Last week, Russia claimed a breakthrough. President Vladimir Putin proudly declared they were the first to approve a vaccine. He said his own daughter had been vaccinated. But scientists doubt the Russian vaccine named Sputnik V is really ready. What's beyond doubt is that thanks to high-tech methods used by the likes of CureVac, research is moving faster than ever. In normal times, it would take 10 to 15 years to get a vaccine to market. Now some companies have reached the clinical trial phase in a matter of months. Regulators are expecting a breakthrough as early as next year. No other product in the world has a larger potential market. Many nations have already placed orders for hundreds of millions of doses. CureVac plans to produce a billion per year if its vaccine comes to fruition. The question is, whose will hit the market first? And for more on this, I'm joined now by Franz Werner Haas. He's CEO of CureVac. It's good to have you on the show. When will... Hello, good morning. Thank you. When do you expect your company to have a vaccine ready for the public? And how much will it cost per dose? We are planning to have the vaccine ready somewhere mid next year, depending certainly on the data we are running clinical trial, which will be broadened after first clinical data, which we expect in September, October. And do you know how much it will the cost? Pricing, per- sorry, the, the, the pricing at the end of the day it will be somewhere based on the cost of goods and um, uh, certainly all what went into the technology which has been invested into for the last 20 years in order to make it happen, but it should be affordable. Uh, So you you shouldn't overdo it with the price. There are certain settings already done. We are on a very low um, uh, uh, cost of goods and uh, this should be reflected in the price there as well. So I would guess somewhere uh, between 10 and 15 euros. 10 and 15 euros. Are you already in discussions with governments to supply certain amounts of the vaccine? Yes, of course. Uh, as uh, we have got something to offer, and if you, as you have seen that governments are doing this advanced purchase agreements, and certainly we are in discussions as well. Can you give us any names of the governments that you are in discussions with right now? No, at the moment I can't, sorry. Your company is 20 years old and has yet to bring a, a product to market. Why? Do you believe it can deliver now in such a short time frame? Well, the technology has been developed during all these years. In order to get a technology in a, in a stage that you can really uh, develop products on it, it takes a certain period of time. And this mRNA technology, what we have, is very versatile. So if you know the virus, the sequence of the virus, because we are not working with the virus directly, but with the uh, uh, sequence of the nucleotide sequence of the virus, And this is what we are coding on the RNA, which has been in humans. And uh, this is really a rapid development. Certainly the rapid development is due to the fact with regulatory authorities as well that we are facing a pandemic, which needs certain requirements, but always taking an eye on uh, safety and security and tolerability for the patient. So if I understand this correctly, the technology has improved, the regulatory environment has improved. But should we believe that mRNA therapies, vaccines in this case, are going to suddenly, they're going to work in the next few months just because the urgency is greater? Um, Or is there a chance that something might fail during the larger phase three test, for example? 
Of course, the risk of development is always there. What uh, the RNA can do is that you really fastly can code exactly the protein, the wanted protein for the very target uh, on the RNA to produce it also rapidly uh, because it's a synthetic process for the RNA manufacturing. But it doesn't take the risk of product development, of course, and this is why you're running clinical trials. And there will be loads of data, not only with us, but also other RNA players, which are running clinical trials. And uh, then you will see uh, what the data will bring. And one should not forget, we are dealing with a virus where nobody knows exactly all uh, the elements of the virus, what you need in order to be protected, how long you are protected. It's a new virus. But the RNA can really address, due to the fact that you can develop rather quickly on the basis of RNA, to really have a vaccine and then to test it. And we should mention two of those other firms um, that are also working in this area, BioNTech, Moderna. Do you consider this a race with other biotech firms? Well, first of all, it is a race against the time. Uh, there is a pandemic outbreak there with huge effects on society. Nobody you know, doubts about this one. And therefore, it's a race and um, not that much against the competitors. Uh, and at the moment, and hopefully all of those vaccines will work, there, there is a race also to have enough capacity. You always start in the beginning and you can't cover everyone. And therefore, it's good that other players are on the, on the, uh, in the game as well. What kind of pressure does that put on your company to be raising capacity that is production level at the same time that you're building a vaccine that you don't even know if it's going to work or, or achieve public approval? Um, how essential is it that you get this right? Well, it is enormously essential for, for different uh, reasons. First of all, the company is running for 20 years. That's exactly why the company has been founded, to make a difference, to give a cure in a situation like this one, to be fast, versatile and, uh, of course, uh, safe and terrible and ho hopefully efficacious there as well. So it's a huge pressure. It's a huge pressure because uh, there is a pandemic uh, situation out there and certainly everybody is looking to us for good reason because we have got something to offer and this is what we have to prove. So the pressure is there, but it is a positive pressure because also our employees have been working on it for all these years exactly for this moment to make it different and hopefully it works out. The German government was an early investor in you at the beginning of the pandemic, I should say, 300 million euros. Do you expect them to climb out now that you've raised successfully so much more money? Well, I certainly cannot talk for the German government, but the investment, and there was a press conference also with the Minister of uh, um, Economy saying, okay, this is a long-term investment, mm -hmm. and uh, they are in for several weeks now. I think this is not a long-term investment. There is so much more we can do because it's not only about COVID. It's really uh, changing the medicine today and, and put it on RNA uh, in, in different regards, and oncology, protein therapies as well. All right. That was Franz Werner Haas, CEO of CureVac. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.